Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I am out here fishing on the wide open sea, totally solo, on my own, outboard boat, fishing tackle, could you want for more? That wonderful sense of freedom that you can only really get, I'm afraid, sea fishing on the ocean. I'm at Cork McSherry in Southern Ireland and I'm fishing in one of the self-drive boats offered by Mark Gannon who runs the Cork McSherry Sea Angling Centre at Woodpoint, it's bed and breakfast establishment which I've known for probably, God, 40 years. I mean, there's some great inshore fishing here. I wouldn't drive 800 miles here and back otherwise. Today, I'm gonna to be trying a double whammy. Can I get bass and pollock in the same day on my own? Now listen, the weather's on the change. It looks okay here. You guys probably think it's wonderful out there. Well, it seems pretty wonderful at the moment, but it's a big storm coming in about 36 to 48 hours. I've got a tiny weather slot that allows me to get this small boat out. So I'm gonna be trying here, I'm gonna be fishing with red gills, trolling them behind the boat, just trailing them in the water. A lot of people use lures, live bait, sand hills. I don't do any of their casting, I just do trolling, and I'm pulling the lures about 50 yards behind the boat, 40 to 50 yards behind the boat. Now one thing is guys, I'm gonna to have to use a head cam, because once I start trolling, I'm up and down on the ocean, I'm not having the big camera go over. I've had it on my own boat, high sea drift, and I've had it nearly over the side several times. Not gonna happen this time, so you're gonna to have to listen to some of Mike's lovely music or my voiceover, and I'll see what I can catch. Of course, I have to catch something first. Let's get fishing. Now here's a tip if you're looking for pollock, they love rough ground. Also, the people that love rough ground are lobster and crab fishermen that put those dams or boys out. Now there's another one, and you can see if, you, if, you, if you're looking, there should be two of them. There should be several, several hundred yards apart, they might only be 100 to 200 yards apart. But if they're strung from one end to the other, a line of pots, there's a pretty good chance there's gonna be some rough ground in between them. And that's what the crab fishermen and the lobster fishermen need, a bit of rough ground, a bit of sometimes even reef. So look out for those crab and lobster pot boys. And if you haven't got an echo sounder, I've caught a lot of good fish by using those. It wasn't long before dropping down on one of these reef marks I was into, yes, straight into, a pollock. That's the best of fishing in Ireland. If you can get the weather to get out in a small dinghy, there's some great sport to be had. You only need lightish spinning rods, maybe a couple of ounces of lead, or even a jig to get the bait down or the lure down. And being clear water over there, no sort of pollution, no coloured muddy waters, it's very, very clear. The predators, like the pollock, or the bass can see lures, they can see artificial lures. Of course, you can take fish for eating like this if you want, you can see that guy has just nailed the jig, big time. If you get a deep hook fish, if you put your finger into the bend of the hook, you can generally pop it out. And on that case, it was a nice twisty tailed, well, fire towel, we call them a worm, that accounted for this pollock. No need to kill them, I put them straight back. So what do you do? You drop down to the seabed, close the bail arm and just wind slowly until you feel a drag on the other end of the line. It's not really a slam intake, it's a drag. And what you don't want to do is to strike too hard and pull that lure out of the pollock's mouth. Uh oh, it looks like Graham's got two on at the same time. I always leave a second rod just hanging down about three quarters depth so it doesn't snag on the bottom, on the seabed, on the reef, in the kelp or the weed. And very often you can get a second fish and that's exactly what I've got here. Yes, now I'm in a big mess. There you can see one was an absolute jumbo mackerel. And the second one is gonna be a pollock, is it gonna be a pollock? No, it's another big mackerel. Now these are big, real jumbo, good eating fish, good smoking fish. You can use them as bait, but that's a really good eating mackerel. And again, on that fire tail rubber worm, really good. And they can, you can drop them up and down in the water depths of the sort of lower third to a half, or indeed, 
you can just let leave them hanging there as long as you're drifting and here you go again guys a second double hook up for me and just goes to show you that that red twisty tail even if you're drifting along can still pick up that extra fish even though i will probably catch more while I'm working the eel dropping it down covering more water if you know the depth you're at and you don't get snagged just by letting it hang in the water with the real drag set light so you don't lose a rod over the side you can have great sport like this and that's two at a time Don't forget, with fishing like this on light tackle, you just drop down, pull up, and you always do your wind on the lowering of the rod. Here we go, double hookups come in all the time. In fact, when I went with Mike previously, a couple of years ago, we drifted over there from uh, the same small dinghies. We actually got a quadruple hookup at the same time over one of our red hot inshore reef marks for Pollock. So when it is on, it's really on, a lot of it if you get get fish like this fantastic fishing a lot of it to be honest depends on the weather it depends on the speed of the drift it depends on the state of the tide so many factors come into having good fishing over there predominantly it's weather choice of lure not really you can see i just had one on a red fire tail and this second fish is on a smaller regular size there you go blue a bluish color sandy or what we call a natural red gill and a super brace of pollock there, both going back over the side. So you drop and you wind slowly off the bottom. Just got to keep that speed fairly constant, just nice steady wind, not too fast. You just want to impart enough retrieve ratio in the reel. I've already had one bump there. I'm going to drop back down again. I don't want to lose those area that the fish are taking. There's a very good chance even the same fish or another one will take again. Drop it down to the bottom, hit the bottom. You don't want to snag a few turns, bang. I'm on again, uh oh, second fish lost. It happens, you can't do anything about it. Best thing to do, just keep fishing away, fishing away. Sooner or later, it's gonna come your direction. Again, okay, here's a different species. It looks like a pollock, but in fact, it's a coalfish. It's got a white lateral line. They fight much harder than a pollock. They, oh, I've dropped it as well. You can see he's flapping around. It's a tough fish. The coalfish is a tough fish. It fights all the way from the bottom to the top. Small eye, smaller mouth than the pollock, and whoopee, here we go again. You can see they're frisky creatures. They do not suffer from the bends or swim bladder pressure changes like the pollock does, but significant factor to identify is that white line on the lateral. Well, I've taken a big camera out, guys, because the sea's getting up a little bit now. They did forecast it. I'm now on my 10th pollock, can you believe? Using that rig, switching between the two, no huge fish, up to about five pounds, a couple of cold fish, but it shows you out in a small boat like this. You can get, whoa, hold on guys. But the thing that's against me, I've lost a couple of leads down in the reef, and I haven't, I've got a heavy lead now, so I can't feel them take quite so well. Here's another one, not a big fish, look. Good sporting scrapper. And that one was on a sidewinder lure. I've been catching them on the jelly worms, on the regular rubber sandals, unweighted. Plenty of fish here, the tide's flooding. The thing that's against me is the wind, because wind and tide together, I'm drifting really fast. I'll see how long I can tough it out. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I might just pick a big one off, you never know. 
at the end of the day on that last drift. But at sea, never mess about with too many last drifts. Last cast in freshwater fine, last cast at sea, it's a whole different ball game. In again, <laughs> it was that extra, extra drop down, a bit bigger this time as well. Oh no, about the same size, about the same size. So I've yet to find the really big ones that are known to be out here. But there you go, it's on that dull, sort of greeny coloured lure there again. But it's working, and listen, when things are working, don't change them. Now, about that last cast, or last drop, or last tangle. Right, guys, I'm on. I've had to run the boat for a minute or so. I think it's a bass. I think we might have the bass after all those pollock. It might fall off. Oh my god, the net's up there. I've got another line out. Hang on, we're in such a cluster. The trouble is, I don't want to give the fish any slack. Take a look. It's probably only a couple of pounds. Three pounds, but at least it could. I feel sure it's a bass. Here we come, here we come, here we come. Yeah, nice little bass. <laughs> oh, look at him go. Probably I don't want to drift over my other line. Is I have to bit this kitty in, and of course, obviously I've run it 100 yards back. One of the advantages of fishing and filming on your own is you get all the action, all the fish, and trust me, all the stress. If I get slack line, I'm going to lose him. Come on, line. Give me a break, it's going to go around the propeller. Right, I'm clear here. What, he's about two pounds, he's not, guys, he's a good fish. I think this one's net material, I can't lift the big camera up, sorry. There's no chance of lifting it any higher on the tripod. It's just going to go over because the sea's come right up now and it's presumably well, I've got this back. Don't fall off buddy, we just give us a break. Give us a break in life. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to show him to you. He's down there in case he falls off. Hopefully you can see that. A black red gill. A nice bass there. Beautiful silver bass. Let's get him in a boat. Hopefully I'll be able to show him to you. God, what a mess I'm in. Bass fishing does that to you, did you know that? Bass fishing can, can, can send, send you right over the edge. There is no knowing cure or treatment for it. He comes, get in, get in, get in. Oh, oh, get in. There's something about bass fishing. Oh, yes, please, people. The camera might be crooked. Ha! The sea's getting rougher. Obviously, you're not going to be out here tomorrow. But there, folks. Ouch. They have spikes as well, by the way, I might like to point out. There we go. A cracking bass. Look at the size of the mouth. Absolutely pristine condition, that is. Really pleased with him. Get that hook out carefully. That's the lure, my favourite one. A black red gill. And just look. What a magnificent fish. There's only one thing to do these with these. Really put them back. Let's get him returned. I'm going to lay him down. I'll try and get the return for you. I have a feeling I will get spiked. Bear with me. Also drifting onto the rocks. <laughs> 